The 2022 Oslo Freedom Forum kicked off in Taipei on Thursday, November 3rd. The event featured several champions of change who highlighted the importance of democracy, freedom, and individual rights around the world. We also had the chance to speak to Hong Kong activist Nathan Law about his journey in support of democracy, his new life in the UK, and his take on cross-strait tensions following China's 20th National Congress. The Oslo Freedom Forum is a great occasion to accommodate activists from around the world to spread their words, indeed a very important um, voice from these closed regions um, in in, 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 in their stories fighting against um, injustice. So um, it is important for the Hong Kong story to be included because we are for now facing the largest authoritarian regime in the world. Our civil society is demolished. Uh, we need more people to stand up for Hong Kong and appeal more people to stand with Hong Kong. So uh, my presidency is definitely marking that um, stance and I do hope that by speaking at the Oslo Freedom Forum that there will be more people supporting our struggles. In my presentations, I will probably talk about um, not only Hong Kong, but also um, the other um, regions um, that um, the other activists have talked about, um, and also remind everyone that even though we're in the darkest time, but we still need to have, have hope. After I left Hong Kong in June 2020, I've been um, an international advocate for Hong Kong. I've been speaking up um, for the people of Hong Kong and the future of Hong Kong in many different occasions. Um, some of them are very important, some of them I can directly talk to policymakers. So to propel them to make more assertive China policy, um, these roles are really important because uh, for the people of Hong Kong who are living in Hong Kong, they are unable to speak up. Um, if they, uh, for example, say that Chinese officials should be sanctioned for what they've done to Hong Kong, or the world should be more tough on China, they will be immediately arrested. So this responsibility um, lies on the shoulder of exile activists. And um, for me, I see myself in this role and I'll continue to speak up for Hong Kong people. It was definitely a tough decision um, to leave Hong Kong. Um, I used to think that I would be buried in Hong Kong, um, but the introduction of the national security law changed everything. It changed the way that we see Hong Kong. It changed um, um, whether we will be safe just by speaking up the truth. Um, so for me, um, leaving was um, more than myself. I had to leave my home, my friends, all the things that I like in Hong Kong. But I also get an opportunity to continue to speak up. And that is really important for myself. Um, so I, I really do hope that uh, by making that choice, um, we have grown the democratic movement of Hong Kong. Um, living in London is, is not that difficult because um, I don't have that, 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 that large language barrier and the culture is not um, very different. Um, so for me, um, seeing London as my base and um, speaking to politicians and policymakers from around the world and can need to make sure Hong Kong becomes a focal point. Um, th this is pretty much my life in, in London. Uh, why not Taiwan? Um, I think um, the largest uh, mission is to change how the Western world, uh, most notably the US and EU and UK, um, and many other democratic countries um, to react more strongly to China's threats. Um, so I see myself uh, more useful in that um, sphere of the world because um, there could be that more changes could happen if I successfully accomplish my duty uh, because Taiwan has already um, uh, become a, 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 a country with full awareness of China's threats and your de democracy, you, your people voted for a government that are determined to defend, um, defend Taiwan's uh, status. Um, I think these are a good signal. Um, my role is to remind the people and the governments indeed who, uh, who, who don't have the, the, the same level of awareness as Taiwan to catch up the pace and to, uh, to be more assertive to China.
Well, there have been a lot of cases that they encounter difficulties, but we have also seen some, uh, uh, some other cases that they find refuge um, in Taiwan and they, they are able to escape from the terror from Hong Kong. I think we still just have to, uh, to continue to have dialogue with the governments to explore what other ways best uh, suit um, the, the, the exile activists from Hong Kong to Taiwan because um, in essence, uh, the Taiwan um, is known to, 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 to have a track record of lacking a kind of immigration policy and refugee policy. I think this is not um, specifically targeting Hong Kong people. It, it's just like in Taiwanese, in Taiwanese society, there has not been a sophisticated discussion about it. Um, so I think this is also a good golden opportunity for Taiwanese governments, for them to re reflect themselves and to think about a, 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 more com, a, a more comprehensive immigration policy because um, Taiwan is an aging society, there, there, there's a lack of um, um, workforce uh, and in, in the world of talents we need, we need more competitiveness in attracting these people and make yourself more resilient in this global economy. So I, I think this is really important for Taiwanese governments to first think of a very comprehensive immigration policy. Then we can find out what Hong Kong pe people could play in this big picture. In Hong Kong protests, we had the slogan, Today Hong Kong, Tomorrow Taiwan. It was supposed to be a warning. We definitely know that there is a difference in the context and the situation of Hong Kong and Taiwan. Um, but um, we need to be very prepared. We need to be very aware, um, otherwise it could possibly be a prophecy because of lack of preparation for what's coming to Taiwan. Um, so I, I think it's, it's really important for us to take the Hong, Kong, Hong Kong's case um, of how quick a city could fall and, and to factor in Taiwan's, uh, the, the calculation of Taiwan's future. Um, for now, we can definitely see uh, China has been the aggressor. Taiwan has been trying to avoid the war by better preparing for that. Um, I believe that having higher deterrence is the best way to end the war before it started. If we are, you're saying that we don't want war so that we do nothing, what will come because you don't have deterrence effect. Uh, we are in we're facing the largest authoritarian regime. They have a track record of abandoning their promises, abandoning their, um, their agreement to the people. You can see the case in Hong Kong. And if we don't have enough power to tell them that you, you are not going to do it because you will suffer from the consequence that you cannot bear, they will do it because they want that result and they don't need to obey any Moral, uh, moral guidance uh, for themselves. So I think having more deterrence is important. Is more important than having more meaningful, me having more meaningless communication. Okay. I think Taiwan's youth, uh, first of all, um, they need to have a sense of urgency. They need to understand the fragility of um, the current situation. Um, and after they have that urgency and have that awareness they can think of the role in, in, in the whole campaign. It doesn't mean that you have to be a soldier or carrying a gun, but um, building a stronger democracy, countering fake news, countering, um, um, countering the, the, the information warfare launched by the Chinese, Chinese authority, um, trying to have more um, civil diplomacy, like diplomacy in the civil society, um, to interact with the global community, to boost Taiwan's international recognition. All these are one few of the things uh, from a large wide range of options that young people can help. Maybe you, you cannot um, be the determining factor, maybe you cannot single-handedly save Taiwan, right? But you can definitely be contributing in this big campaign. This interview and the many conversations held with activists further shows the importance of speaking up against authoritarian regimes in events like the Oslo Freedom Forum, especially in Taiwan, which is a beacon of democracy to Asia and the world.
This is Vivian Xiao for TVBS World Taiwan.